Well, today we're going to be talking about a really good topic, I think. <laughs> and uh, before we do, let's lighten the mood up a little bit. I normally don't start this way, so bear with me. We're going to start with a funny. Is everybody okay with that? All right. So this is called the new CEO. Are you guys ready? All right. All right. So the new CEO, a company feeling it was time for a shakeup, hired a new CEO. Well, the new boss was determined to rid the company of all slackers. On a tour of the, facili uh, on the, tour of the facilities, the CEO noticed a guy leaning against the wall and idly picking his teeth. The room was full of workers, and he wanted to let them know that he meant business. He asked the guy, how much money do you make a week? A little surprised, the young man looked at him and said, I make $400 a week. Why? The CEO said, stay right here. Wait for me. He walked back to his office, came back in two minutes, and handed the guy $1,600 in cash and said, here's four weeks' pay. Now get out and don't come back. Wow. Feeling pretty good about himself, the CEO E.O. looked around the room and asked, Does anyone want to tell me what that goofball did around here? And from across the room, a voice said, He was the pizza delivery guy. <laughs> Somebody got a good tip. <laughs> Laughter does good like medicine, the Bible says. And I'm learning more and more the importance of laughter. In fact, my wonderful in-laws, uh, my father-in-law, was telling me recently that he said, Louis, we need to laugh more. It's important to laugh more. And it reminded me of that amazing scripture in the book of Proverbs, which we'll get to in just a moment. But it's important to laugh. Now, as we do get started, I normally do start at 1 Corinthians chapter 2 because I like to always set the expectation on Jesus. So go there with me. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. And this morning, as we're coming into God's Word, coming into a season of thanksgiving, um, I just want you to stay focused on all the good that He's already done in your life. He has already done so much. Logan was mentioning it before service, but He is so good. He's so good that any time a smidgen of bad shows up, His goodness wipes it out. <laughs> regardless of what that badness looks like. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. And it says, My brothers and sisters... I, can I just say, I'm so grateful that you're my brothers and sisters. I'm so grateful to be a part of the family of God. My brothers and sisters, when I first came to proclaim to you the secrets of God, I refused to come as an expert, trying to impress you with my eloquent speech and lofty wisdom. For while I was with you, I was determined to be consumed with one topic, Jesus, the crucified Messiah. I stood before you feeling inadequate, filled with reverence for God, and trembling under the sense of the importance of my words. The message I preached and how I preached it was not an attempt to sway you with persuasive arguments, but to prove to you the almighty power of God's Holy Spirit. And then verse 5, For God intended that your faith not be established on my, man's wisdom, but by trusting in His almighty power. That's who we're trusting in today. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we honor you and we thank you so much that you are good, that your mercies are new every morning. And this day, this hour, this moment has been set aside for us to hear a word in due season from you. Father, I ask you to help me to exactly deliver what you want me to say. Nothing more, nothing less, and nothing else. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so let's turn to Matthew 4. I'll tell you the title in just a moment, but I think you're going to get the idea as we uh, go through a few scriptures. You brought your Bible, right? Hopefully your Bible app as well. Hey, beautiful. I'm talking to my wife, excuse me. Can, can, you, uh, can you get me a tissue, please? It's right under, underneath you. Thank you. 
Sorry, my nose is deciding to say. Hmm. Oh, and this is my lovely wife, by the way. Isn't she lovely? <laughs> okay, that's as much as I'm going to sing. Stan, okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Matthew 4, I didn't tell you the verses, verses 23 through 25. Bless you. You are blessed. Matthew 4, verses 23 through 25. And Jesus went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction among the people. Verse 24, so his fame spread throughout all Syria, and they brought him all the sick, those afflicted with various diseases and pains, those oppressed by demons, those having seizures and paralytics, and he healed them all. Verse 25, and great crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decap Decapolis and from Jerusalem and Judea and from beyond the Jordan. Now turn with me to Luke chapter 4, please. Jesus healed them all. Luke chapter 4. Jesus healed them all. Can I ask you something as you're turning to Luke chapter 4? Are, are you considered part of an all this morning? Good. Good. Luke chapter 4, starting in verse 38. Luke chapter 4, verses 38 through 41. And starting in verse 38. And Jesus arose and left the synagogue and entered Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was ill with a high fever. And they appealed to him on her behalf. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever. Another word for rebuked that I looked up was forbid the fever. Another translation said he commanded the fever to leave. And it left her. And immediately she rose and began to serve them. She got right back into her calling. Verse 40. Now when the sun was setting and all those who had any who were sick with various diseases brought them to him and Jesus laid his hands on every one of them and he healed them, every one of them. Verse 41, and demons also came out of many crying, you are the son of God, but he rebuked and forbid them and would not allow them to speak because they knew that he was the Christ the anointed one. He healed them. Matthew 15, and then I'll tell you the title. This is just my introduction, you guys. You're good, right? <laughs> Matthew chapter 15. You starting to see a pattern? Mm. Matthew chapter 15. In Matthew chapter 15, when you get to Matthew chapter 15, go to verse 30, and we'll start there. Matthew 15, verse 30. And great crowds came to Jesus, bringing with them the lame, the blind, the crippled, the mute, and many others. And they put them at his feet, and he healed them. Verse 31. So that the crowd wondered. They were amazed when they saw the mute speaking, the crippled healthy, the lame walking, and the blind seeing. And they glorified the God of Israel. Healing is always supposed to bring glory to God. Because it truly represents the Father's heart. So the, the title of today's message is called Jesus, Our Healer. Jesus, Our Healer. And now a lot of the key things that we just read through dealt with a lot of physical symptoms and ailments. But I'm also reminded that he's also the one that heals our broken hearts. 
He can heal emotions. He can heal past thoughts and issues that we've experienced. He is the healer in every respect, in every way. No ifs, ands, or buts. Right there, you see again and again, anyone who came to Jesus, His will was to heal. All they had to do was receive. All they had to do was receive. It's so easy to receive from someone that loves you. You know, a few weeks ago, we had Didier here, and um, one of the key things that stood out to me about him was he said, you know, I can receive from someone that I know loves me. If I know that you love me, it's easy for me to receive from you. Can I tell you that Jesus loves you, and it's because of his love for you that he's making it real easy for you to receive your healing this morning. And now, I am not going to end this service without us being able to pray for the sick, but I want to do something a little different with you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and give you the end from the beginning. Each and every one of you are going to have an opportunity to pray for one another. And I'm going to model it with my wife. She'll come up and we'll show you how easy it is. Because in just a few minutes, you're going to see that that same healing power that was in Christ Jesus in his earthly ministry is now in you and now in me. The question is, do you believe? I loved how Logan said when Jesus came to the crippled man at the pool of Bethesda, he had just one question. He was, the power of God was ready to heal in and through his life. But he just had that one question that if you heard Logan just a few moments ago, he said, do you want to be well? Do you want to be healed? Jesus, our healer, is in this room right now, and he's asking each and every one of you, do you want to be well today? Do you want to be healed? I loved again how Logan shared, are you willing to let go of, past, of the past? That includes past aches, pains, all of that stuff regrets, anything and everything, and allow the Lord to do something new in you. Because you see, I've also recognized and I've realized that it's real easy to identify with our sicknesses and our diseases. My wife and I, we were talking about this not too long ago, and I said, you know, I'm only 46. I don't need to be feeling all of these different things going on. I'm like, what in the world is going on? I sounded just like our son Samuel. What in the world? And um, I said, from now on, Anita, my wife, my love, I give you permission to speak into my life if you see something, and vice versa. And we just said, listen, we are no longer in our home going to put up with pain, sicknesses, disease. Do they come up? Yes. Do we take authority over them? Yes. Does God get glorified? Yes. Because it's already His will for us to be in health. This is not flu season. This is our healing season. And you have to determine that for yourself. Now, I'm here to encourage you. I'm kind of like your cheerleader, kind of, you know, cheering you up. I know, a guy cheerleader. Okay, that's cool. But I'm here, nevertheless, cheering you on to recognize and to realize he's here, and he's with you always, and he's saying, do you want to be well? Do you want to be healed? How long are you going to drag that sickness or that identity that identifies you with that sickness? How long are you going to drag that pain? How long are you going to drag that unforgiveness? How long are you going to drag that bitterness? How long are you going to drag what's been keeping you back? Will today be the day that you decide, I'm letting go of the old and I'm grabbing a hold of the new? Can you guys back in the background, um, uh, our production team, hey guys, can you put up that first picture? Um, so I had a few pictures of Jesus. Isn't that a cool picture of Jesus? Now, I was looking for a laughing Jesus. Guys, if you Google that, you get all kinds of pictures. This one was probably one of my faves. I wanted that to be up there just for a moment. 
Because I want this phrase to be in your mind. Whenever you're thinking about a sickness, because maybe you're saying, Louie, but you don't understand, like the woman with the issue of blood, I've had this for 12 years, and I've dealt with many physicians, and I've dealt with many issues. Can I just tell you, when I look at Jesus, and I see him looking at any of those diseases, or demon-possessed people, or paralytics, or all of these people coming to him, I see him looking at that and just laughing. Really? That's a piece of cake for me. That's the phrase that keeps coming up with me when I see Jesus. I don't see Jesus saying, oh, God, please don't let them be paralyzed. Please don't let. He is so not worried about what's going on in your life. He's already made healing and provision for you. It's a done deal. I want you to have that picture in your mind so that when it's your turn to pray for someone else, you're going to have the opportunity to say, hey, by the way, let's just start off with this. This is a piece of cake for Jesus. Whether it's a cold or whether it's cancer. Listen, uh, I told you earlier that two people in our family were admitted to the hospital this past week. One of them was admitted with cancer, as it turns out. Do I give a rip? No, because I am not going to be more impressed with the devil's sickness or disease. I'm going to be more impressed with what Jesus has already done. And so I'm laughing at it. And I'm, and you know, I was talking to my family member and I said, so where do you, where are you believing God? And thanks guys. You can take that picture back down. Although I do like it. Um, I, I, I asked, I said, so where can I meet you? How can I believe with you? That's something that I learned from Pastor Terry. And because I want to meet a person where they're at. And you know what I loved about his response? He said, you know, I'm really at a good place right now that if I'm healed, I'm good. I'll be happy to live another 20, 40, however many years the Lord gives me. And if I'm not, I'm ready to see my mom and my family. And I said, yeah, you know what that is? That's a win-win situation. Whether you get, you get healed right now, which is God's will, always, or whether you decide, no, I've gotten a glimpse of heaven, and I'm choosing to go, then I'm okay with that as well, and I'll agree with you on that. And at least we'll be touching this as, as, as this concerning this, and we'll still bring glory to God. Can I tell you? You win either way. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 55 through 57, talk about death. Where is your sting? Where's your victory? It has been swallowed up in the life of Jesus Christ. And the thing is, is the life of God is now residing and dwelling within you. Again, pre-service prayer, we were talking about how we are God's temple. We get the opportunity to host His presence. The more you begin to recognize and realize that, the more you realize, well, wait, one of the ways that I glorify God in my body is by walking in health. I'm supposed to be healthy. I'm supposed to prosper. I'm supposed to not have any pains or aches or all of this other stuff. And, you know, we had a wonderful, again, going back a few weeks ago uh, with Didier, we had a wonderful uh, Sunday night service. It was great. Lots of people got healed. Uh, There was just a lot of good stuff going on. But then this is something that I started to hear after the fact. After the fact, I started to hear that the enemy wasn't very happy that you had taken back territory. And so he would come, he was coming at different people and saying, well, let me see. I'll throw in a little symptom here and see what what they say out of their mouths. And the reason, part of the reason why I'm sharing on this, it's not because I had family members that went to the hospital. Actually, it's the, con- the complete opposite. God asked me to preach these, this about two or three weeks ago when I was asked to preach today. Not, he, of course, knew what was going to happen. What's coming up out of your mouth? Because once you receive healing today, then it's your part, my part, on a daily basis to speak the word of God. Proverbs 18, 21, right? Death and life are in the power of my tongue, your tongue. I tell my six-year-old son, Samuel, I know it's pretty cool. I know he likes the different uh, Marvel comic guys here. I mean, he knows the basic ones. Uh, He really likes Superman. 
which is cool. Okay, I like Superman too. Um, but I tell him, Samuel, you have a superpower too. He's like, really? Well, you know, what is it? Uh, can I fly? Can I, what, what, you know, what is it? Get his attention. I said, yeah, you have a superpower. It's your words. You have the ability to declare death or life over situations. I'll tell you another one, too, that I've told him. I say, Samuel, do you know you also have a superpower? Not even God will get in between you and this superpower. And he's like, really, what? You have the power every day to choose. God's not going to force you in anything. I get to choose. You get to choose. Amen. We get to choose life. Deuteronomy, right? Verse 30, 19, right around there. This day I have said before you, life and death, blessing and cursing. Now choose life. Choose blessing. Listen, every single day we get to choose. I get to choose. And you know what's even a better message than us choosing is that Jesus has already chosen for us. And when we choose Jesus, by choosing Jesus, we already choose life. By choosing Jesus, we already choose the blessing of God that makes one rich. Listen, that's uh, Proverbs 10, 22, that makes one rich and he adds no sorrow with it. Don't limit richness to just money. Richness includes relationships. Richness includes health in your body. Richness is in every area of your life. Okay, now I'm cheering you on because in just a minute, you guys are going to be the healing disciples. Oh, it got quiet here. Come on now. You got the same. Okay, so Romans chapter 8, verse 11, the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead now dwells in each and every one of us. And he quickens or makes alive these physical bodies. Okay, all right. Let us continue. <laughs> so remember, regardless of what the person says, hey, I need prayer about, you need to remember Jesus just smiling at that, laughing at that and saying, that's a piece of cake for Jesus. That is a piece of cake for Jesus. It's diminishing the work of the enemy and it's glorifying God anytime you say that. Amen? All right. Now, Mark chapter 16. You guys still with me? All right. God is so good. All the time. All right. Mark chapter 16. So we just read about Jesus healing everyone that came to him. Wow. And then look what Jesus goes on and does here in Mark chapter 16. Just so that you can see it with your own eyeballs. <laughs> Mark chapter 16, beginning in verse 15. Mark chapter 16, verse 15, it says, And Jesus said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. Verse 17. And these signs will accompany those who believe. So how many believers do I have here? Woo, praise God. You've said yes to Jesus. Romans 10, 13 says, Those that call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. Praise God. So verse 17, and these signs will accompany those who believe. And here's the key to it all. In my name. In the name of Jesus. When you're praying for each other, you're going to pray not in the name of Louie, not in the name of Anita, not in the name of Logan, not in the name of Nikki, not in the name of John, not in the name of Dovey. You get the idea. It's in the name of Jesus. He has been given a name above every other, other name. And at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that he is Lord, including cancer, including poor relationships, including you fill in the blank. His name is above it. Now, do you believe? Amen. All right. So these accompanying signs will follow those who believe in my name. 
Number one, they will cast out demons. We just got through reading that with Jesus. Number two, they will speak in new tongues. I just wanted to pray in my new tongues. Amen? All right. We're doing good. That was number two. Verse 18. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And in parentheses, Pastor Brian says, not on purpose. All right, Pastor Brian has said, do not bring any snakes in here. We are not that kind of a church or ever will be. Amen? This also though, does refer to demonic oppression, demonic issues. You speak. You have authority in your household. You know, my son this morning asked me, so, Dad, what does kingdom mean? I was like, oh, okay, well. So that is the king having dominion over his specific realm. And I said, so, for example, Samuel, Mommy, you and I are the kings and queens, the priests of our home and our property. We reign supreme here under Jesus, of course. So whatever is not in heaven, we are not going to allow on earth in our home, in our relationships. We continually declare our marriage is a heaven on earth marriage. Our family is a heaven on earth family. Anything that doesn't line up with that is out is out in the name of Jesus. So that's when I'm picking up serpents with my hands and really my feet and just kicking them out. Remember, the book of James says you submit yourself to God. Once you're under cover and under authority, then you resist the devil and he will flee from you. Not might, but will. And he's not fleeing from you. He's fleeing from Jesus in you. But since he's in you, he's fleeing from you too. Just saying. Amen. They will pick up serpents with their hands. Verse 18. If they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. I've heard of different testimonies about that, which is awesome. But the last part here. They will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. So today, you are going to lay hands on the sick and the other person is going to recover. Now, let me just say something right quick while I'm thinking about this, while it's being brought up. You might say, well, Louie, I'm not like you. I'm not on stage. I have had all of these things going on this past week. I kicked the dog. I yelled at the kids. I did anything and everything. I waved my middle finger out there at the... Uh, intersection between Bobby Jones and Washington Road. I lost my temper, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Isn't it amazing how instantly when we read scriptures like this, we want to discredit what Jesus said that we could do. And that's the point. The enemy wants to discredit you. The second he can discredit you, then of course, what's the point? I can't do it. Leave it to the Look, I'm pointing to myself like this isn't me, but leave it to the people on stage, the super dupers. Leave it, to, leave, leave it for the super dupers. Surely not me. But yet we just got through saying and reading in Romans 8, 11, that if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead now dwells in you and in me. Gloria. Wow. I like that. Espanol. <laughs> Amen. This is good in all languages. <laughs> okay. Can, can, can I just, again, to give you some levity. Now, guys in production, before you put up this next picture, I want to go ahead and read this disclaimer for you so that you're not trying to figure out what it's saying on the words. It's disclaimer. For the record, this is not Jesus, but we've been waiting for a reason to use this photo for months. Can you guys put that photo up for me? Doesn't that make you just smile? It's just laughter. So while I was looking up for uh, pictures of Jesus laughing, this picture came up, and I was like, I love that. Now, you know, part of me, I know that he's laughing or she's laughing, but part of me also, it's almost like a laugh cry. I couldn't quite figure it out. But it just brought me so much joy. As I was preparing for this message, I kept thinking, that is a happy baby. Do you know that on average, children laugh more than we as adults? We get so, oh, 
this is so hard. Oh, Jesus, help me. We, I, I, just, I just felt like I was Eeyore or somebody. Uh, isn't, that, isn't that the guy from um, the, the little donkey? Eeyore, right? Okay, that is right. Okay, good. You know, it's just always gloomy and sad. Guys, it doesn't matter if it's what it is outside, if it's cloudy. You have God on the inside. You have sunshine every day. That song was true. <laughs> you really do have sunshine every day. And I see Joyful dancing to it now. And the reason that I wanted to bring this up is to remind you of the importance of a joyful heart. We need to laugh more. Have you guys ever heard of Jesse Duplantis? If you go on, on YouTube and you look up, um, what is it, A Merry Heart volume, I don't know, he's got like eight volumes. I think it's A Merry Heart Does Good Like Medicine. Just listen to some of the stories that he has shared and you will begin to laugh and laugh. In fact, I'm reminded, thank you. Yeah, I was going to say you can take the baby off. <laughs> I was reminded of a fun um, of a really neat testimony about a person who was diagnosed with cancer. And in the doctor's office, the person that received the diagnosis heard the cancer. It was terminal, stage 25, whatever, you know, it was, I, I don't know how many stages there are, but I, I think that sounds pretty bad. Oh, four, okay, sorry, so 20, so, okay. So anyway, it was stage 150, and um, they got that news, and instead of it weighing on them, this is what they literally started to do. <laughs> and they started to laugh so hard, so strong, belly laughs. You know those belly laughs where you can't breathe? Have you ever had those? Those are so fun. And you just laugh and laugh. And so the person kept laughing and laughing and laughing. And this, this went on for literally like 10 minutes. And then finally, they went to the, uh, what is it, medical professions that oncologist, thank you, that was there, and they said, do the test again. Do you know they didn't find any cancer? A merry heart does good like a medicine. Why is it that the enemy is consistently trying to make you be a sourpuss? Makes you look like you've been baptized in lemon juice. Why, you know, why is it that we get so weighed down? Now, uh, okay, I love you. Say, Pastor Louie, we love you. Okay, I just needed a hug. Okay, I just needed a hug. We also have to make sure that we do a good job of guarding our heart. It's easy to get weighed down when you start looking at things that are going out in the world and lose sight of what God has already declared over us. Anita, myself, Samuel, we have to, as best as I can say, we guard, we fight to protect our kingdom, if you will. And we do that because God has given us the authority to do so, as he has given you. Now, let me, let me share the actual scripture that this whole teaching came out of. Proverbs 17.22. Proverbs 17.22. Proverbs 17, 22. By the way, Pastor Terry had us um, in our pastoral care group. He had us reading a proverb a day, and that has been one of the best things that I could have ever done. I mean, this is one nugget of wisdom, but it is full, full of God's character if I could put it that way, how to properly speak, how to properly act, what a man or woman of God should act like. I mean, just amazing. Proverbs 17, 22. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drieth the bones. I looked up that word merry, and it meant um, gleeful. That was a neat word. Blithe was another word that I hadn't looked at before. And again, as I was reading through this scripture, the, the Holy Spirit thought that came up in me was, you know, Jesus was cool under pressure. People 
brought stuff to him. And he was always unimpressed by the devil's tactics and schemes. Like, do you remember the lady that was, quote unquote, caught in adultery? And she was caught in adultery and they were pressuring him to make one of two decisions. He was unimpressed with the devil's tactics, but he was cool under pressure. You know, it got me thinking more and more about that. Um, and I, just because of time, I want to make sure that we have time to pray for one another. But it was in uh, John chapter 8 where it's recorded. And um, as I was reading through it, I could see the judgment in their eyes. Judgment that meant to bring death. All for the purpose of trying to get Jesus to say something or do something to discredit the message that he had brought from God the Father. Now, obviously, we know, or if you haven't already known, you can read it in John chapter 8, the first 10 or 11 verses. But all of her condemners leave after he speaks to everyone and says, he who has the first rock, the first stone, cast that rock, cast that stone. And from the oldest to, to the youngest, they all left. And the only one that was left that could have condemned her, that could have judged her, extended mercy and then said, now go and sin no more. That's what we get to do on a daily basis as ambassadors. Earlier, as we were talking about discrediting ourselves or allowing the enemy to discredit us, I want you to know that God has already dealt with the root of sickness, which is sin. You know, sin always pays. The Bible says that the wages or the payment of sin is death. But God because of his love and compassion for you and for me, made a way for us to be not only forgiven of our sins, but because the root was taken care of, the fruit, the sickness, the poverty, all the other anguish that we all face and have faced has already been dealt with. I want you to have that in your heart because as you're praying for one another, get your eyes off of yourself and get your eyes on Jesus. Jesus is not condemning. He's not condemning you, the one doing the praying. And he's not condemning the one who has the issue. We all have issues. I'm so thankful that he loves me even with my issues. And then he shows me a better way. And he says, this is the way. Now walk in it. I want to encourage you with these different times in Jesus's life where anything and everything else was trying to pull him away from his message that God is a good God, that God wants only the best for you, and that everything else that had been said prior to that was going to be taken care of by him going to the cross. Guys, I just want you to know that sickness, that disease, it truly is a piece of cake. And the more I got to thinking about this scripture here, Proverbs 17, 22, a merry heart does good like a medicine. It does good like a medicine. You know, I thought about how Jesus healed the boy that had an unclean spirit. And he, again, he was unimpressed, totally unimpressed with what the devil was doing. And he actually got into talking to the dad. How long has this been going on? This isn't right. This isn't the Father's heart. The Bible says that Jesus was, is, and will always be an exact representation of the Father. Something that Logan was telling me not too long ago that I really appreciated. He said, Louis, I've learned that I cannot base and will not base my view of God on my experiences. I will only always base them on Jesus and his experiences. And as we read earlier, he healed them all. He was not a respecter of persons. He loves everyone equally. And you say, again, 
but I've done this and I've done that. Well, this is why I want to start. I can see the runway. And so I'm letting you know we're coming in for a landing. I want you to turn with me to James chapter 5. I think this is going to really be beneficial for you. Because I don't want you to leave out of this door not receiving healing from Jesus that was rightfully yours, that was rightfully yours to receive. And, and by the way, can I just throw this out there to you as well? It's James chapter 5. Every person that Jesus healed was not born again. He hadn't gone to the cross yet. Who are you to deny Jesus from healing you today? Now, if you're not born again, you can be born again. Amen? The person praying with you, you can tell them, hey, I need to receive Jesus. Hey, call out on the name of Jesus. Take my life. Do something with it. I'm born again, born of the Spirit, born from up above. You can be part of the family. But in James chapter 5, let's look at this because you guys have a part to play as well. James chapter 5. It's after Hebrews. It goes Hebrews, then James. I will, I will resist the urge to give you that uh, dad joke right now. <laughs> oh, goodness. It's just amazing. God is just so fun. Okay, James chapter 5, let's just focus in on verse 15. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, and the Lord will raise him up, now, we tend to believe those first two parts of that verse, but look at the third part. And if he or she has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Let me read it one more time. And the prayer of faith, what you guys are about to do with one another, and the prayer of faith, which, by the way, doesn't have to be a long, drawn-out prayer. Did you ever notice that Jesus' prayers were, Cancer, go in the name of Jesus. Or he would say, cancer, in my name, go, you know. But he would speak, right? Command, okay? And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick, number one. And the Lord will raise him up, number two. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Oh, but you don't understand, Louis. I smoked so much dope. I ended up being the dope that God smoked. You got that? I heard that recently. I thought, yeah. Listen, God's grace is more than sufficient. If you've smoked dope, I, listen, I came from Columbia, South America. All right? One of the, I see someone's laughing. One of the things that they used to joke with me about when I was in school, and I'd be like, I'm about to beat, you know, I'm about to fight. Um, they would say, Louis, you're from where? I said, Columbia. Columbia where? South America. Oh, I bet when you were young, you used to run through the cocaine fields, right? <laughs> Whatever. Listen, hey, can I just be transparent with you? And I'm not trying to minimize this because I have family that have fried their brains because of cocaine. Believe me, I am a walking miracle testimony the fact that I'm here. But yet, God is able to restore someone who's fried their brain on whatever drug you can think of because he's that good, because he forgives, he heals, he loves you. Okay, now, check this out. This is how, the, 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 this, is, this is something that I, I need to do. So this is, I'm not going to read all of them, but I'm going to read you a highlight, okay? This is 101 things that God has said about healing, Okay? Old Testament, New Testament. But I'm not just going to read to you what God has said. We're going to have our response as well, and then we'll pray. Okay? Okay, so you ready? Yup, I like it. All right, so now, and, and just as a reminder, God's word is God speaking to you and God speaking to me. We're clear, right? All right. Now, on these, instead of just trying to Write each and every one of these down. Just sit down and receive. Just rest. Now, now I, do want, I do want to mention this as I'm reading through these. If something pops up, if, if the Holy Spirit highlights one of these phrases, keep it 
because that might be the very word that you need to pray for someone else in just a few minutes, okay? Or it might be just the word for you. Cool beans? We're good? All right, here we go. God's word is God speaking to me. So God said the following, I am the Lord that heals you. When I see the blood, I will pass over you and the plague will not be upon you to destroy you. I will take sickness away from the midst of you and the number of your days I will fulfill. This is all God speaking to you and to me. I turned the curse into a blessing unto you because I loved you. I have redeemed you from every sickness and every plague. I have found a ransom for you. Your flesh shall be fresher than a child's, and you shall return to the days of your youth. At any point, you can say amen. (laughs) I have healed you and brought up your soul from the grave. I have kept you alive from going down into the pit. I will give you strength and bless you with peace. I will preserve you and keep you alive. I am, this is God saying this, your father who loves you. I am the health of your continents and I am your God. I will satisfy you with long life. I heal all your diseases. I sent my word and healed you and delivered you from your destructions. I heal your broken heart and bind up your wounds. I will recover you and make you to live. I am ready to save you. I give power to the faint. I increase strength to them that have no might. I will renew your strength. I will strengthen and help you. To your old age and gray hairs, I will carry you and I will deliver you. I bore your sickness. I carried your pains. I was put to sickness for you. With my stripes, you are healed. I will restore health unto you, and I will heal you of your wounds, says the Lord. Behold, I will bring it health and cure, and I will cure you, and will reveal unto you the abundance of peace and truth. Now, that was all from the Old Testament. Listen to some of these from the New Testament, and then it'll be our turn to respond back. Because Anita, my wife, she was telling me now, don't just declare this over the people. Have them declare this over themselves as well. Remember, death and life are in the power of your tongue. You need to speak this over your bodies. Listen to what Jesus said, representing the heart of the Father, His Father, our Father. I will. He was speaking to the leprous man. Remember the man full of leprosy comes up to Jesus, says, if you will, you can heal me. And he's, his response is, I will be thou clean. Jesus goes on to say, I took your infirmities. I bore your sicknesses. If you're sick, you need a physician. I am the Lord, your physician. I am moved with compassion toward the sick and I healed them all. I heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. I heal them all. As many as touch me are made perfectly whole. I, Jesus Christ, make you whole. You know, we didn't read this, but in James chapter 5, verse 16, right after the verse that we just got through reading in verse 15, in James 5, 16, it says, Pray for one another, and I will heal you, says the Lord. Look at that. Whosoever will, let him come and take of the water of life freely. Beloved, I pray above all things that you may prosper and be in health. Now, this is our response. So I'm going to say several of these, and I want you guys to repeat. And again, let's go ahead and stand up, because I know your bottom can only take so much. And so let's go ahead and move around. (sighs) All right, you guys have done so well, but I want you declaring this over yourselves, and I also want you to be able to pray over one another in just a moment. My love, can you come up, please? Thank you, sir. Wonderful. Okay, so this is my love, my boo, my friend. You know what I said. (laughs) Okay. And you can, you can please be a good example and repeat. Okay. 
<laughs> she is a wonderful, amazing wife. Ah, I tell you, there are two relationships, two key relationships in my life that have made me the person that you see before you. The Lord Jesus Christ and this lovely lady right here. Amen. Love you. <laughs> She's like, Louis, stay focused. <laughs> yes, ma'am, I am. Okay, you guys ready? Okay, so this is what we're declaring over our lives. Okay. According to my faith, According to my faith. Be, it unto me. be it unto me, Jesus gives me power, Jesus gives me power. and authority. Over all, unclean spirits, over all unclean spirits to cast them out, to cast them out. And, to heal all and to heal all manner of sickness, manner of sickness. And, all manner of and all manner of disease. Healing is the children's bread, Healing is the children's bread. And, I am his child. and I am his child. If I can believe, I can believe all things are possible to me, because I believe. When hands are laid on me, I shall recover. Sickness is satanic bondage. And I ought to be loose today. The Lord has come that I might have life and that I might have it more abundantly. Faith in His name makes me strong and gives me perfect soundness and this one we've been reading for a while or quoting Romans 8 11 the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead now lives in me and his spirit will quicken make alive my mortal body my body is the temple of His Spirit. And I'm to glorify Jesus in my body. Jesus has given me His name. Jesus has given me his name. And has put all things under my feet. For I am seated with Him. In heavenly places. Jesus has delivered me. From the, of from the authority of darkness. Jesus will deliver me, Jesus will deliver me. From, every from every evil work. Jesus tasted death for me. He destroyed the devil who had the power of death. Who had the power of death. Jesus, has me Jesus has delivered me from the fear of death and bondage. By Jesus' stripes, stripes, I was healed. Okay, now, isn't God good? His word is Him speaking to you. All of those are backed up with Scripture, just didn't have time to be able to go through all of the Scriptures. Now, this is how it's going to work out. Okay, so you're going to go up to a person. If you're married, stay with your with your husband, with your wife. If you're single, try to find another single of the same sex. Amen? Amen? Single men, if you can't find someone, then find a married man and wait for them to pray over their wives. Just want to make sure everybody's good with that. All right? Okay. Now, all you need to do is just go up to the person and say, what can I pray with you about? And at that moment, that person... At this point, Anita does not need to give me an organ recital. She doesn't need to tell me 12 things that are wrong with her. I just want one thing. So let's just choose one thing. What can I pray with you about? My neck was hurting earlier. I'm so sorry that that's going on. Well, in Jesus' name, we're going to agree and pray about that. Now, I'm just showing you that's exactly what we're going to do. Now, we just got through reading. We lay hands on the sick and they recover, which is why I was saying... Single guys with single guys, single ladies with single ladies. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. In just a minute, I'll get you to pair up. I want everybody to have someone. And then at that moment, 
I'm going to take the authority in the words that God has given me, right? And I'm going to pray just like this. Well, let's come into agreement. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I command that pain in Anita's neck to leave now and never return again. Amen. Now, one thing that I would encourage you guys to do as well is check each other out. How does your neck feel? It's better. Does it need more prayer? She said it probably needs more faith on my part. Listen, all you have to do is receive. But I, I, I'm sharing this just to let you guys know, talk to one another, okay? And have the other person check themselves. Like if Anita was praying for me, I would say, you know, I've been feeling some stuff in my joints that I don't like to feel. They don't, it doesn't belong there. And then afterwards, she would say, okay, now test it out. Feel it out. Does it feel better? Yes, it feels better. Listen, Jesus had to pray for the guy. Who was it? The guy with, uh, he was blind. Yes, he was blind. Jesus prayed over him, and then he could only see the trees or people walking like trees, and he laid his hands on him again. If you need to lay hands again, then do so. But make sure that you're appropriate, okay? That's why I'm saying guys to guys. And even if it's a non-appropriate place, then have the person lay their hands wherever they need to lay their hands but you need to ask hey test it out and one thing that i didn't say with anita just now is like don't be nice to me because if if it's not feeling better we need to take care of this right now jesus said you're supposed to be healed so okay she said it was feeling better so i'm going to pray for her again okay let's agree and pray again father i just thank you that you love anita that you were moved with compassion to heal her. In the name of Jesus, all remaining pain leave now and never return, never return. And I might even start praying in the spirit. By Jesus' stripes, be made whole from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. In Jesus' name, receive. He loves you. Receive. Now, how are you doing? Awesome. Awesome. Praise God. Do you see how simple that is? And by the way, I'm not over here sweating bullets because I'm not the healer. Jesus is the healer. It's, that's why it said, in the name of Jesus. Okay, so take just one minute and pair up. Find someone. Okay, single guys, go with single guys. Don't start praying just yet. Boy, you guys are ready. Man, you guys are good. Don't start praying just yet. Just find someone to pray with. Okay, I'm just looking around. I'm making sure that everybody has someone. Love, you look that way. I'll look this way. L lift your hand up if you already have someone with you. Who already has someone to pray for them? All right. Look at all of these healing disciples. I feel like today we are, we are dubbing you Sir Logan, <laughs> Sir Keith. All right. Who does not have someone partnered? Does everyone have a partner? Tim. Who can go back there with Tim? Tim needs someone. Hold on. Nope. Don't pray just yet. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, wait. Man, you guys are prayer warriors. I get it, but hold on. Tim, I don't see anyone with you yet. Can you guys? Would you mind? Okay. Yeah. Hey, that'll be perfect. All right, does everyone have a partner? Okay, now the next minute, I want both of you, both partners, to ask one another, what's the one key thing that you are praying for, that you're believing for? Go ahead and ask them, what are you believing God for? Go ahead. Not an organ recital, just one key thing. Okay, now that you know what that one thing is, 
I'm going to give you a minute. I want you guys to pray for one another just the way we modeled. Go. Remember, Jesus is the healer. You lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Speak life. Speak life. Speak health. If their lungs are having issues, speak life and health over their lungs. Lungs open up in the name of Jesus. Brains work right in the name of Jesus. You good? Love you. Speak life over you. Thank you. Now, now ask them, do they feel better? Tell them, check, the, check, check yourself out. How do you feel? Can you see better? Can you hear better? Check yourself out. All right. Okay, how many of you can already see and testify that you're doing better? I can see one hand there, one hand there. All right, remember, another hand there. If you need to pray again, then pray again. Okay, I'll give you another minute. Remember, you're speaking to that disease. Command that thing to get out of, get out of that person's body. Their body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. God wants his people well. Thirty more seconds. All right, now let's turn our attention to Jesus. Can we turn our attention to Jesus? And let's begin praising him for healing us. Father, we honor you. We thank you that you are the healer that you have healed our eyes, you have healed our hearts, you have healed our stomachs, you have healed our joints. Father, thank you that the good work that you've begun in us right now, you are faithful to complete in us. Thank you, Lord. By the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. We are made whole. Father, thank you that you've given us power and authority over our words and that we will continue to speak life no matter the symptoms, no matter the diseases, whatever comes our way, we speak peace to the storms in our brothers and sisters' lives. Peace in Jesus' name. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing lacking in Jesus' name. To God be all the glory. To God be all the glory. To God be all the glory. We rejoice. He is your healer. He is your deliverer. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. See how easy that was? Now you can do this at home anytime you want. <laughs> you can even turn on, turn on, turn on the, uh, uh, the radio and the music in the background, just like we have our wonderful, amazing brother Tony doing it right now. Man, I mean, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of, uh, his name is Dappy Keys. Have you ever heard of Dappy Keys? Oh, yeah. It's great music. It's just like this. It's, it's instrumental and it's amazing. Well, guys, you're healed, you're loved, and you're set free. Keep thanking God. God bless you guys.